Hey, it's Ed. I recently joined Fred Valais and Julie Friedman Pacini on PPC Town Hall, where we discussed responsive search ads in great detail for an hour. This is the highlights video in a somewhat narcissistic manner, because essentially it's mainly me talking. But uh, if you enjoy this, do check out the full length video. Link is in the description. There's a pretty big shift that's happening, and we've got some great experts with us today to talk about what you would do. Ed and Julie, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. The RSAs are going to create a few lazy account managers, um, dare I say it. But that's opportunity for, for other people that uh, aren't so lazy. Uh, this is, so say that a new client comes to you and they haven't done RSAs, like would you go and write entirely new ad units? So yeah. If a, if a, yeah, so if one of those 17.5% turned up, knocked on the door and said, uh, we don't have any RSAs, take their best ETAs. Uh, hopefully they've got, a good years years data and more than two ETAs and um, take the best components and create an RSA. If they're really good at ad copy and really smart, then be lazy because you could create an awesome RSA uh, and uh, get away with it for some time, probably. So, well, I mean, RSAs are definitely testing of ads as we have historically known it. It isn't just not going to exist anymore in the world of RSA, right? Yeah, but I agree with that. But the example of um, A-B testing with 10 broads is, that's a setup issue as well. And, you know, don't get me wrong, a lot of people do it wrong and, and don't have a controlled test. But yeah, I agree. And people misread them. And as a result of that, you know, you've got 10,000 queries driving two ads off the back of a dozen keywords. Um, and then within seven days, pick a, a winning ad. It wasn't really the winner. And as Julie said, it's it's not that straightforward anymore with RSAs, is it? But but also to touch on what Julie said, we're going to lose that compounding benefit of doing proper A/B tests, the the trial and error of A/B tests. You know, quite a strict, stringent A/B test routine over a period of time does give incremental value to an account. We're going to lose that. So I'm interested to see that compounding performance will go away potentially, unless the machine learning is that good that. This is all mute, and we just stick a load of ads in and walk away. And, and I guess this is um, a question: like, how good and dedicated are you? And then you can do better than the machine, or is there a happy medium? Oh, I think um, as I think analytical people really struggle with ad copy and ad writing, and I think it's the single weakness of, of most uh, PPC managers is the is the ad copy. So, can they beat the machine? Probably not over the long run. So I'm defending Google now and the machine. So I've hold on, I've offended PPC PPC managers, and now oh god, uh, do no evil. Um, I think, in fact, that is one of the angles that a PPC manager, particularly freelancers and small agencies, can take is to team up with really good copywriters um, and admit that it's not their strength. And if you're going to fill stuff, you know, if you're going to fill an RSA, make it worthwhile. But I'm going off on a tangent, so things that you might want to adopt, right? Because it's like, okay, well, Google is telling you this is where it's going. And we all know that you can't swim upstream against Google forever. Sorry, Fred, to interrupt. Did you do multi-pinning versus single pinning? We did. Because I think that that would be interesting because yeah, I definitely see that pinning impacts the uh, impression share, particularly top of page rate as well. Um, which again, you know, that's Google being... I'm not allowed to swear, am I? Yeah. Googly. They're being googly. It screws over, found the word that didn't have an FC or B in it, screws over the people that can't, that have very strict brand guidelines that Julie was just talking about. Because um, we found a single pin is quite damaging to impression share, not necessary to performance metrics. It was four to five times as many impressions per ad going to the RSA ads. Um, and it's not just that, Fred. Like we, so I pulled end of last year, 17% increase in top of page rate for RSAs. So not only, um, and CPCs were flat. So not only is Google biasing the impression share to an RSA, you're getting a higher ad rank essentially. Um, so it really is rewarding RSAs more. That was last year. I haven't got the year before. I don't know if you saw the same, but to me, that's a you look at the top of page, but and but that's the promise of RSAs, right? Is Google says we can show a more relevant ad 
based on what we know for the auction. And then, yes, naturally, you're going to have a higher ad rank mm. because it's a more relevant ad. So your predicted CTR is higher. And we can see that in the stats where we look at CTRs of RSA versus ETA. But if you get five times the impressions and you're controlling your bids in a smart way, like five times more impressions, 10% less conversion rate, well, that's still a hell of a lot more conversions at the end of the day than before. I'll take Especially if, you, yeah, if your business has got fixed costs, definitely. I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense to scale incrementally and uh, take those additional, that of additional volume. And there's a lot of businesses that are volume play, you know, insurance and finances and stuff. I think it hurts potentially sort of small to mid tier retailers a bit more because they might get more volume, but the ROAS tends to dip, doesn't it, in some of the uh, conversion metrics of RSA. But, um, but then they've got shopping, so you can't have it exactly. both. Probably should be the main thing for them anyway, right? Yeah. <laughs> Look, Google is heading towards a, or that the target is you give me a URL, you give me a budget and you bugger off and we do everything else for you. That's Google's end game. And um, is it five years away? Is it 10? Who knows? But it, it's understandable because it cuts out all the, the drift in the middle, any issues, uh, you know, and Performance Max is a bit of a test of that ideology, isn't it? But you still have to create your, your ads. Exactly. And I'll, I'll do a softless uh, or little promotion here, but my book came out recently. So this is my second book. Um, but what if you don't want to bugger off? Well, what if you make a living at this, right? Julian, Ed, um, you kind of want to do better. Plus, your clients expect you to be the different. And I think it's, right it's about too. time, Fred, that um, PPC managers, agencies, freelancers became more business savvy. And people are going to hate me, and I'm divisive probably saying this, but. There's your angle. There's your edge. If you're, if you know that your clients or potential clients are struggling with this connection between Google and their data, that should be your foot in the door. That should be not the PPC, not the ads, because uh, you know every man and his dog does ads and SEO and so on. But to actually connect those dots for them, um, you know, you'll be their best friend for life. Because then all you got to do is turn on Performance Max. If you enjoyed this. Be sure to check out the full length video, hour long. Link is in the description. Cheers.